it off into Acid Plant. As we have to the bottom right hand side, our blue Zerg player. This is Ply. Going up against the red Protoss to the top left hand side. Creator here. And this PVZ, best of three. Nice quick transition from one series to the next. Feeling good at the moment. Looking okay. As we uh, get this set up and underway. I would prefer not to. Comes in with a one year resub. Boo, 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 boo. I need I, I'm gonna have to get a stream deck and some sound clips, aren't I? Everyone else has a stream deck now, and I'm just sat here without one. Like, I should get myself a stream deck, really. Okay. Um, <laughs> I prefer not to. Thank you so much for the 12 months. I feel like Twitch should make it so that when you subscribe for 12 months in a row, it should be like, you subscribed for one year in Oh, I guess one year in a row doesn't sound as good as 12 months in a row, is it? Maybe it doesn't need to say in a row, it just says, you've subscribed for one entire year! Make it feel really epic, wouldn't it? He says, Bly, take my energy. Thank you so much for the 12 months. I would prefer not to. And, uh, he's giving his energy to Bly, our blue Zerg, who is. I have a couple of overlords coming across the map right now, just opening with the hatch, gas, and pool. So really not a shenanigans from him just yet, which we can definitely sometimes expect. Now guys, this is a European server event, and we are, uh, hence on the European server for this matchup. We swapped to Korea because the last two players were Korean, but for this EU server event, it means that unless both players agree to play on NA, we play on Europe. And obviously Bly's like, well, if the rules are we play on Europe, we play on Europe, and that's obviously very standard. You know, it's the same as when we have Korean server events that don't allow you to switch as well. Then we play on Korea, because the Koreans aren't going to go and play on NA if they can just stay on Korea, right? So, makes a lot of, uh, makes a lot of sense, and uh, excited to see what uh, is going to come of this here in this ZVP where Bly played yesterday, got tucked down by Denver in the semifinals, so he's already been so close to qualifying once today. I wonder if you'll... Uh, Come close again today as we do see a Stargate just on the way up from Creator here in the main base. Just a couple of Corona boosts here and there as well into a couple of these Nexus and Adept on the way out. As you do see this Pylon is going to be cancelled by these couple of Zerglings. So Pylon is uh, cancelled. Ling's just kind of controlling that and there's a block on the third hatchery but Bly just takes the third hatch in the other location. Acid Plant's one of these maps where there really is a couple of different choices for where you can take your expansion and we do quite often see both players, you know, players kind of taking the different expansion based on just where their opponent blocks initially. There's some preference, sure, you know, there's a base, you know, there's bases which you'd kind of prefer to kind of usually kind of commit to but, you know, at the end of the day Bly is probably expecting to go up to four bases relatively easily in this game and so if that's the case, does it really matter which of the bases you're third? It has pretty minimal impact for the most part. Two adept shading forwards as we do see them picking off a couple of drones. The lings with the full surround do get rid of those adepts. The adepts fall. And we are going to be seeing the lings coming back up in towards the center here. And these couple of lings continue to nipple away at the cyber next core. Adept gets back into the gap between these buildings. So, again, just giving itself a live supply continues to apply pressure here. 27 drones, really a lot of lings so far. Man, you know, he's uh, working his way through the cyber core. If he could deny Wolfgate, that would be insane. Oracle has popped out, though, and that's going to be so critical. Imagine Wolfgate went down. That would just slow down everything that Creator would want to do here for the near future. And even if he gets back onto it now, there's a shield battery to buy him some more time. There's a second adept. The Oracle has a little bit of energy left over, so the Lings really aren't going to be able to do enough here. And again, the shield battery is uh, healing it up as well. A few Lings sneak by. The adept's moving out of the wall there is a small mistake, and Bly will... Split these Xylings uh, into two different groups, and we'll just try and target down what he can. Gets one and two probes here in the main base already, and he will be able to take down, or he will be losing those Zerglings to the right-hand side as well. 35 workers apiece at the moment, as we are going to be seeing for some reason. Bly's mess rallying drones across the map, realizes it. That's kind of painful. That's, what, four of his drones? He's only on 40-ish workers. That's 10% of his current economy, which is just wandering across the map. Just wandering across the map. But it was nice of him to find a couple of drones at the very least, or probes at the very least, with that small Zergling run by. As we do see the Robo and the Twilight on the way up currently from the creator. 
A few extra gateways as well. So going in towards that six gate setup with the uh, obviously the Temple Archive soon to come into play most likely. And probably into the charge as well. We've been seeing it again, just we already saw a lot of it in the previous PvZ. Uh, when Skillers was doing this against Bly. Bly in general is able to hold on pretty well as the Warp Prism starts to come through here. Bly now is actually running around against these couple of Adepts, which have found themselves four drones and forcing a lot of Spore Crawlers and Extractors and so on to kind of stop these uh, Adepts from finding much more. Five drones killed in total because the Double Oracle dives into the main base. Some damage dealt and Queens will just be shy of getting the final connection on this lower health Oracle. Somehow it just is able to kind of sneak away alive from this. That's kind of crazy. Well, again, Bly, if the roach speed coming up, I wonder how much he'll commit into those roaches. Will he go mass roach like he did on Blackpink and Skillers, or is he just going to play a little bit more kind of, a little bit kind of less kind of heavy on the roaches, and, you know, maybe a few to defend initially, but then keep on drawing it up and kind of going from there. Prism to the right side, and we are going to be seeing a few High Templar walking in. Obviously, the first two Archons can come into play now, and that's going to be one of the things those Roaches will be pretty good at pushing back a little bit more so than, say, if it was Lings and Hydras, which are just a little bit more flimsy, and which do get targeted down, just that a little bit more easily. Warp Prism coming in towards the main base. Now, there's some Zealots moving across the map at the same time, so the warping of Zealots here creating could definitely apply a lot of pressure if these Zealots also looking to hit this fourth base, maybe, maybe move towards the third or the natural. So, all that's starting to multi prong, and there is those first Zealots coming through. The Oracle's even here as well to join in. Stasis Ward could definitely be utilized if he wants to, and he will use that Stasis Ward right from the get go. A lot of roaches at the front shut down those initial Zealots to try and actually go towards the third base, so nice idea, but good defense from Bly so far in that regard. Few Zells in towards that mineral line, those drones have to pull away and create it. Starting to get quite a little bit of damage done here so far as we're going to be seeing the War Prism not targeted. He actually targets the double Oracle. So the Oracles will go down to the Queen and, I mean, that's an issue though because losing the Oracle sucks, but the War Prism's still alive. Imagine he killed the War Prism. This would, you know, the end of this attack would be very soon because there wouldn't be much more you could warp in. You know, it isn't an endless attack. Some stage you run out of units. Probe's going down as a couple of lings arrive across the map. They find just a few on the third base so far. And Zealot's back in towards that mineral line. 25 drones are full and Bly is down on 29 workers to the 46. He's got more roaches coming through, but he's going to have to do something seriously amazing here to make this work. As he is going to get himself maybe this Archon. Of the Archon and the Zealot going down, it puts you in that sort of position where maybe you can kind of push across the map and counter, but... I mean, this Warp Prism's still on the map, right? And that's another issue. If he'd killed the Warp Prism, this wouldn't be a threat anymore. If this wasn't a threat right now, boom, he can move across the map freely instead. The Zealots just drop into the third base instead, and Bly is taking so much damage in this game, number one at the moment. This is going so horribly wrong for him so far. Four just coming up in the main base, and we are going to be seeing an Immortal just popping out of Sentry, finishing up two, and we do have that Prism coming towards the main. Just try and drop another couple of units out. Bly will counterattack, but I mean, we've seen Immortals in production. There's two out already. Sentries are here for the Force Fields, and so that's going to be... Well, Bly kind of punished for coming across the map, but at least he will kill a couple of Sentries. I say a couple. He got one, and then he actually got the uh, the second one. Just got saved by that Shield Barrier, so that was nicely done. As we are going to be seeing this uh, group of Roaches and Ravagers off to the right side. A couple of drones going down again as we do see the uh, prism lifting up. Just a couple of these zealots and just going to think about maybe dropping back around. I mean, it's just so powerful to keep on moving around with these zealots all of the time. So frustrating for a zerg player to deal with in the prism. I and mean, how do you truly shut it down right now? Unless you get your queens on top of it, you're really kind of relying more so on a mistake, I feel, from your opponent than anything else to kind of, uh, you know, get rid of that prism at this point. Unless you can really get out some... I guess, you know, you say a mistake, but you can force a mistake as well. You can force it into the wrong position. You can force it to leave in a rush. If you apply pressure elsewhere, maybe creator doesn't pay attention to it at the right time. You can definitely force that to uh, be something that could uh, be true. We are going to see a plus one attack upgrade. Apparently all my mods are just taking a holiday today. I have to tap out and uh, time people out myself. Prism uh, still at the front and we see a Spire on the way up from Bly in the back of the natural mineral line. So 
Spire coming through the Queens and the Swark will get rid of a hallucination. Obviously nothing too in, you know amazing just yet. Bly wants to apply some pressure here. He wants to apply pressure while setting up in towards his uh, in towards his kind of uh, main kind of switch, which is the muters. And he's going to be hoping that the muters can maybe do enough to bring him back in the game. And if there's anyone who can do damage with muters and kind of find a way back into a game, which doesn't usually go so well, you know, I really think it's probably, really, truly Bly. Roaches and Ravages and Zerglings is going to be uh, coming back over to the right side. More Zerglings going over to the left hand side as well. And they are going to be just jumping in towards the uh, fourth base. And a few zealots coming in as well. Templar archives, storm upgrade research, and the plus two attack as well. Zealots counter attacking once more. Comes back to this warp prison, man. This warp prison has been such a pain in the ass for Bly all game long. It's absolutely crazy. A couple of drones going down. Creator going to be uh, having his prison pushed away in towards the center. 17 meters on the way up, but Creator's obviously seen something because he has started the uh, Phoenix, so he did see the Spire. How many Phoenixes has he already got? None, so he's only just seen this, which means that the meters are still going to be a little, you know, have a little bit of time here where they can really get quite a lot done, I think. I think they can really get quite a lot done. A couple of drones getting taken down. We do see the Chrysalis Creator coming up the left side to chase a couple of those roaches away. Plus two attack and the storm coming through. It's another Stargate in the main base. Hydra's Den from Bly dropping down as well. Nine more meters on the way up here. As we do see that uh, oh, there's something going down. I'm not even sure what that actually was that just went down. Maybe it's just another hallucination. He's going to kill the Fleet Beacon. That's actually pretty nice because it stops the Anion Pulse Crystals, which makes it much more difficult for these Phoenix to deal with the meters. And man, dealing uh, Micro and Phoenix against Mutalis with like the ping of like, you know, playing on Europe from Korea, it's definitely not easy. I have to say, there isn't really much anti-air here. Mm, a couple of Archons do change that, I suppose. It kind of feels like there's not enough to the point where maybe he can just run in, kind of take the fight. I mean, there's only two Archons. And then the Sentries as well, and the Roaches and Ravages are picking up a lot of these Archons and Sentries. Which means, of course, even less to deal with right away. These are going to dive in. They club massively initially, though. Maybe could have been a bit more cautious with that, but either way, I mean, now the anti-air truly is gone. The storm actually lands and kills a sentry more so than the Mutalisks. And the heroes are, you know, they're battered, they're a bit bruised. Bly's still in some trouble, though. The stalkers are now coming across the map because he didn't have to keep them at home. Realizing the mutas were coming across to kill the army that was out on the map, Creator was uh, in that position where all of a sudden he was like, okay, well, I'm going to bring my stalkers across the map too to continue trying to break this down. Just do come in, they are going to be able to kill off this uh, Quoton Cannon here. So Cannon goes down, gets dropped. We're going to be seeing another few probes getting picked off as well as Stalkers and Immortals. A couple of sentries having access through in towards this uh, base. A little bit more damage being dealt here on each side. As Roaches and Mutas going to come up towards the upper left hand. So we will see these Phoenix actually going to dive in on towards those uh, Mutalisks. A little bit more damage done once again, but... Man, the Phoenix actually continuing to drop here. Bly on the other side of the map. This is mostly Roaches, though, so Creator's army can definitely do good against it. He's got so many Immortals and Storms as well. It's kind of interesting, because so often when you see the Mutas come out in this higher number, it turns into the base trade. It turns into the, you know, the back and forth. And it turns into the kind of the tug of war, where, you know, both players are losing economy. The base trade starts out, and it becomes very weird. And it's one of those scenarios where Creator actually just ends up kind of holding on, hanging in there. And Bly is having to kind of continue trying to find new ways to deal damage with the mobility of these Mutalisks. Phoenix actually going to come on in. They are going to be able to come on through. And they actually get quite a few kills with a few Stalkers as well, but the lack of any Impulse Crystals again makes it so much more difficult to micro those than usual. As we do see, Blink has just now started. Man, that's going to be a long time to finish. It means he can't Blink after those Roaches and get extra kills. It means he can't Blink underneath Mutas and help them to kill them off more easily. Again, 4 Phoenix do quite a lot against these mutas if they do get the chance to micro backwards properly, but it's so difficult to know when those mutas are going to turn around, to know when Bly is going to pounce. Let's jump straight on towards this hatchery right here. So this hatch is going to get picked off. And yeah, again, again, another few mutas popping out. There's really not a lot of anti-air here now in terms of Archons, etc., but the Stalkers have really taken over in that regard. 
It's just funny to see Storks without Blink. They're kind of such a useless unit, it feels like, later in the game. But obviously, they're such a necessity against what Bly is trying to do at the moment. Now we're starting to get into that maybe sort of weirder kind of base trade scenario where Cyber Call will go down, you know, meters are across the map with the Roaches, and the bases of the Zerg are starting to disappear. Traitor continuing to clean up here at the moment as we do see those Roaches taking down a pylon and powering these uh, couple of robo facilities and gateways. Across the map, this Protoss army is not going to stop. And some Stalk has actually turned around to go for some of those meters. I lose the Warp Prism though. The meters are going to try and get themselves an Archon. It's going to cost them two Mutalists. I'm not even sure if that's worthwhile in the end. Phoenix are slowly starting to pick off these Roaches as the meters are not here, so they don't have to worry about that. And may as well use their energy for something. Slowly, this attack has been shut down. There's more Roaches drop, especially. I mean, you can just sort of see that Creator has more bases up, and Bly really has lost quite a few bases. A lurk on the high ground, Creator's like, okay, well, I'm not going to attack into that. I'll play it a little bit more safely and kind of wait a little while. There's nothing wrong with rating in a scenario like this one. Where, again, you have your own bases up on the map. And as long as you just get rid of the extent external base of the Zerg, what on earth is he going to do on the just, the, you know, mined out one base that is his main at the moment? The spores get taken down here, and we are going to be seeing this hatcher on the right side fall in two. Fly has the bottom left base, which a zealot has found, is slicing his way through the drones that are over here. A few hydras being made now from Bly. Maybe even a desperation move because his spire is dead. I mean, I guess he just wants to try and build more lurkers. But with what economy? He really doesn't have an economy any further. Nothing down to this bottom left hand side. Okay, well, there's the drones arriving, and a few hydras popping out. We'll clean up this one zealot. When he sees these drones here, I mean, Creator should just be kind of prioritizing that base. I mean, he already knows it's there, so I'd be very surprised if he didn't move down there anyways. The drones will back away, and we really are in this. I mean, he's still actually got some money in his main, so Bly is slowly affording more lurkers over time. 17 minutes and you have money left in the main base. I don't even know how that happens. He must have been not mining here for quite a while, and must have maybe uh, even made a misplay at some point. Creator, though, I mean... Still fighting against the mutas, and that's the most difficult thing he's doing at the moment. Because once those mutas go down, the rest of the army is just not even worth thinking about, honestly. As we're going to be seeing the Observer here is enough to push those lurkers back initially. And yeah, Korea takes some damage running in, but his position really just allows him to. But again, why run in if you can just go to the bottom left and kill off this base over here instead? I mean, it's a very good question, right? And I think Korea answered it for himself. He's like, well, actually, you may as well go and kill that base. Because it's just going to be a confirmation of even less mining income for my opponent. I was going to type out GG as that base goes down. It kind of felt like he's trying to hang on in there just to try and find them. So good. Like, it's not the sort of album I put on and I listen to all the time. It's one of the albums I actually had in my car for a long time. And some days when it was just like a sunny day and I had like a bit of a long drive or something, if I was driving from university home or something, like an hour and a half, hour 45, it's a really good album. It's, it's good. I think it was the first Lana Del Rey album. It's one of the video games on it and all the songs that people actually know, I guess. <laughs> so it's the one which I which have songs on that I know anyways. I guess I don't actually really know much more recent Lana Del Rey. Huh, that's kind of funny. Wardy, your mic is crackling. You can use the exclamation mark static command to realize that we are going to not be able to fix that for the next couple of moments. It will just fix itself, guys. Sorry, I'm trying to work on a solution but nothing is working. And uh, I'm trying to find a way to make it uh, work a bit differently instead. I apologize for that. Fighty Bronze League Hobo, though, for the Cheer 5 during the last game. And Mr. Compacto of the Cheer 100 in the last couple of moments. Thank you so much for the bits, guys. Appreciate the bits. You guys have been nice and generous today. We had a, we had a fun little stream so far, you know. Considering it's a nice little, uh, you know, we're just kind of having a chill stream. Like, nice and, you know, chilled out. Nothing crazy, stuff like that, and, uh, yeah. Alright. So, um, yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for uh, tuning in today, and I hope you guys are having a great day. Um, obviously, if you're enjoying the content, hit the follow button, see when we go live in the future, and, uh, do check out the sponsor of this tournament, which is Sneak Energy as well. Exclamation mark stick in the chat is what I'll say, but let's get into this. Blind the bottom right, creator in the top left. In this game, number two of this best of three. As we will, as we wait to see what's uh, going on in the next few moments. One of those days is why I don't know what it is. I think it may just be the heat. I don't. I, I don't know, but 
something's getting into my brain and I'm a little bit uh, lax. It's one of those days where it's just taking me a little while to turn on. I think I've gone a little bit better lately, but wow, it's been it's just been one of the one of those days. You guys know how it is, you know. You guys know how it is. Anyways, we get set up and we do see this adept is uh, chasing down that zergling as we do see Wolfgate is on the way up. So, Wolfgate coming through here, the Phoenix on the way out from the Stargate opener. Very similar uh, kind of, to kind of what we've just seen before. Stargate opener into, you know, with the Phoenix so you can just Corona boost it out and start to kind of target down that Overlord. So, let me start to go for that here and we do see that Ling Speed is about to finish up in the main base. There's a couple of depths to show up and I'm going to start uh, dealing a little bit of damage. I mean, only one drone actually. Nice spore crawler from Bly. That second drone gets blocked by the Queen though. So unfortunately doesn't fall. So there's a couple of drones here for the Adept. Not too bad as Bly for feelings now. We'll see what he can maybe get done with these. As we do see some extra drones on the way up. And that third hatchery coming on through. On the other side of the map, Creator has thrown down a Robo Facility in the natural expansion. Taking an extra gas as well. Another pylon or so coming down too. I mean, everything's just looking as you, you know, would like to, uh, you know, everything you just kind of want this to be so far. So, not really anything crazy. Not really anything too surprising. Really just seeing the same builds as what we've seen all day. I kind of really find it funny, guys. And I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant here as we have a couple of minutes where we're just seeing the exact same as the last game. So, it, it's kinda, it is kind of funny because. If you guys read the community update about, you know, balance and where things are going with StarCraft and what they're looking to buff and stuff like that, what I found so weird was I read the PvZ section. And in the PvZ section, they're like, hey, we're kind of happy with the matchup. It's, you know, it feels as though, you know, it feels as though everything's, you know, fairly decently balanced, which, you know, I think for the most part kind of is true. But what they said, they said, it's really nice that players are still using no new strategies and trying different things out. And I'm like, huh? Guys. Are you, are you serious? Different things? We've been seeing Templar Archives, Archon Drops, and Charge Slots for the last few months off of a Stargate opening. It's like, you know, sometimes we get really wild and we go for the Dark Shrine opening Archon Drop instead of the Templar Archives. Woohoo! What a way to make things different, am I right? Like, I, I don't know, it just seemed... I, I was just like, really? F PVZ's evolving and builds are being... I don't think they are. Especially on the Proto side of things. I mean, I think on the Zerg side, maybe you could argue we've seen a couple of different compositions, but either way, it all ends up in this very similar mid game. I'd really like to see something which would. I, I While B PVZ is balanced right now, and while it can be fun to watch, I really would like to see something that makes it have a bit more variety, a bit more kind of interest or intrigue, which isn't just the same sort of like, you know, you could really kind of like you know, write a beginner's basic guide on. Hey guys, this is how you play PvZ, and if you watch 25 games of PvZ, 20 to 22 of them will probably have this basic outline to them. It's uh, it's interesting. I don't know. I just don't. I just don't personally agree with the idea that PvZ is exciting and we're seeing new builds. Which is just maybe my eyes. I'd be interested to see what you guys have the. Uh, you know, it's interesting to see what you guys think as well. You know, maybe you guys think PvZ is different every game and maybe it is a bit more intriguing and maybe it's just me and my personal bias because I won't lie since the very start of uh, since Heart of the Swarm really I've never enjoyed casting PvZ because back in Hot we really did have this kind of phase where for the first 12 minutes of the game Protoss would just expand quickly the free bases and go to up to plus two and blink stalkers and boy it happened every game it was insanely uninteresting to watch so uh Maybe I have a bit of a pet peeve from then. Anyways, this fight does start up. Bly made a lot of lings and hydras, which is obviously going to help a lot in terms of shutting down these Archons. And where's the Warp Prism? That Archon here is so, so, so low. Somehow, I really thought it was going to go down. It doesn't quite go down. A few probes are falling on the other side of the map. Six drones have gone down too. Seems like a few Zelds were attacking into the third base at the same time. That's going to be seeing these uh, lings moving out in towards the center of the map, so... Moving out here, looking to see this uh, group of lings just going to jump on towards the Archon. And, oh, we do just have the Archon lifting up into the prism and uh, dropping back down. Still just staying alive, but really only just. I mean, you need to keep those Archons alive. Losing them can really make you vulnerable to uh, follow-up attacks and so on. Uh, Miska Augment's coming on through here, and we do see the Lurker done as well. So, Bly going towards those Lurkers. I mean, obviously in the last game, he went for the Spire Initiative. 
I guess in fairness, I've just gone on this mini rant, and I guess I've completely ignored the fact that Bly does like to play muters, which is a bit of a different way of playing ZVP in fairness. I just feel as though it's still kind of the Frost player that does the same thing every time. Hmm. Maybe I need to open my eyes a bit. Anyways, Hydras are coming on through, and they are going to be uh, pushing back those couple of Archons on the Prism. The fourth hatchery coming down into the center of the map here, so fourth hatchery coming down in the middle, and we do just see Creator is setting up with an Archon finishing up on the top side. We do have that Stasis Ward, which is uh, just kind of sat, and obviously again defensively, kind of you know, it's it's a good thing to have defensively. It's that little bit of extra something that can sometimes just change the course of a battle. It's never going to be a bad thing for you. Is almost always going to benefit you in some way, even if it's just a couple of units that get caught. Even if it just delays the Zerg while he splits a unit ahead to kind of get that kind of stasis ward established, you know, set off and triggered. Well, Prism comes up the left hand side, a couple of Archons inside at the moment. We are going to be seeing the storm currently coming through here in the production tab. A lot of Hydra still gathered up on the left side and still trying to maybe push on through to see just what they can do next. He's going to come up the left where there is actually a sentry for a lot of energy, so you can force field to buy time here to reposition his units. It's actually quite a nice setup by Creator. Just a single sentry which can really just shut down this entire attack. With no Ravagers, you can't just break down that set of force fields, right? Coming in towards the center, a lot of these Hydras gather up again. He leaves a few of them to the side, so... So that opportunity to maybe run up and get something done. So that's an Archons down the left from this Warp Prism. There's actually double Prism on the map at the moment. One at home. The other finds no base down here because it's actually in the central position. And as he moves on to Creepy gives Bly a bit of time to start gathering his reinforcements. Getting ready to deal with those couple Archons. And a couple of Zards too. It's actually really nice for Bly because the Queen started to do the tanking. And if he has a Transfuse, ah, his Queen wasn't close enough. But the Queen's tanking is a lot better than the Hydra's tanking because Hydra's aren't actually very good tanks. They actually die pretty freaking quick. They don't have a lot of health. They're light units. They really do take a lot of damage. And as we have those units coming down. All the way over the left-hand side here. And again, the Hydra's are blind. Going to keep on pushing up as well. The Sentry is not going to drop the Force Fields in time. Okay, he drops them just in time. But two Hydra's get up the ramp. And he does kill the Sentry, so... It's not all so bad, and he's going to pull the rest of his units around. He actually kills the Warp Prism as well off the back end of these Hydras. I mean, obviously there's another Warp Prism available, but killing one, it's already a good little bit of something. As we see, Ling's going to run on over to the right-hand side as well now. Because well, they're going to burrow. Hydra's turn to keep on fighting, pushing these units away. Those Lurkers obviously make a big difference to how these fights can go. As we do see the plus two attack upgrade here from Crater on the main base. Single Zard is just going to be... Continuing to work its way through this hatchery, so continue to push his way through this and just shut down this uh, hatchery from building at the moment. And this oracle comes over and will drop a revelation down on the back end, but the hydras do get the kill. Another little win for Bly again. The hydras uh, kill that oracle here, stops forever revelations. And you see those hydras going to come up the left hand side, and we are just going to be seeing these uh, units pushing forwards in towards this Archon. A few Zelts. I mean, Kray is so far over to the right, he has nothing to do with this number of Hydras. And pushing through, goes straight for the pilot and powers a Robo. He's going to sneak his way through in towards the Natural and up into the main. And that's a lot of production he could kill here. The Lurkers, though, move command into the Archons. Absolutely disastrous for Bly. Suddenly, just as something goes well for him on this side of the map, it's completely, completely disastrous on this right-hand side. That was not what he was hoping for at all, and suddenly he's lost so many lurkers. Bly has a lot of money. He starts to spend with 24 Hydralisks. Mm, 24. Does he have a Spire up? He does have a Spire. And I think that's something which was seen by Creator, and hence the uh, Fleet Beacon and maybe even Phoenix production soon. 19 workers kill. I mean, this was still okay for Bly, but imagine he didn't move the uh, lurkers in on the right-hand side. That would have been a very different scenario. Going to be seeing the uh, prism back over to the right here. We do see these Zerglings of Bly still gathered together, and as a mothership starts to come up, he's going to put some use to that fleet beacon. And a couple of Phoenix here, which is probably why Bly didn't spend his bank on the uh, Beatles and instead built just be even more Hydras. Plus one melee attack coming through from Bly as well as. I'm not going to see him find a lone immortal in the middle of the map here. Supply. Working hard to push this game free so far. 
Remember, the winner of this does qualify to the main event and gets into the prize money of today's qualifier. It's just $50, split it in a $40, $10 ratio to first and second. It just allows us to give away OSE bonuses in the qualifier. Um, otherwise, we'd kind of not be too bothered about putting on a prize pool for a qualifier. But it also gives us a reason to play out the finals, which is also a bonus. This few units here from Korea coming around the right side, and we are going to be seeing Lings, Lurkers, and Hydras. These are gathering up at the moment from Bly as we have a War Prism of Creator. They're going to be coming back, or that's going to be coming back up the left as well. More mortals coming through. Blink starting up as well. Plus a free attack on the way on the forge. And we are just going to be seeing a Tithe in the main base, so... Bits and pieces at the moment. Bits and pieces as we uh, see Bly just slowly, meticulously working his way towards that Hive. And hence maybe the Greater Spire and the Broodlord potential, but... On the other side of things from Creator, he's still kind of just hanging in there. I mean, the Mothership is a step in the right direction for his tech, but he's not making a movement into extra Stargates, carriers, etc., right? Maybe that's just because he doesn't feel as though Bly's going to do much. He recalls a lot of his army to the right side to defend these Lurkers. And Storm's here as well. It's a bit of a choky area, so he has to be very careful of how he engages it. Storm's continue to drop, although there's not really a lot in the very front lines. And those Hydras make their way forwards again. I mean, he recalled everything over here, and Bly just attacks on the other side of the map now to push on through in towards the natural so really doing a lot here I mean the mothership shows up but you just kill the mothership he just spent so long building this that would be a real shame to lose it gets pushed away saved but obviously has to give up these probes now because they're not hidden by the mothership by invisibility well we do see Claire got the mortals coming forward see a sentry as uh, high templar as well trying to see what uh they're going to be able to do as we have this uh, couple of extra lurkers going down. So lurkers going to keep on dropping. It's a cleanup over here by Creator. Bly loses the army, but so much dealt over on this side. These hydras going to start going down as well. Though these a couple of lurkers will go a long way to help out, but there is an observer here, so the lurkers will end up falling. Phoenix will get rid of this overseer as well. So a cleanup from Creator on the left and the right. Bly starts to rebuild. He did a lot of economic damage, but can he hold off of a counterattack? Not a hydra to the right hand side, and we are going to be seeing so many units here at the moment for Creator. And I mean, that's what's so scary, right? While Bly did so well in terms of pulling Creator out of position and poking and just getting damage done, in the meantime, Creator was able to hold on with a lot of his army, and the army is really going to be a huge influential factor here. Having enough of a Creator can push on down and let's see what he can do. As he comes down at the right hand side of the map, these lurkers are going to be finishing up in a moment or two, and we do just see a couple of small crawlers going to be dropping down as well. Lurkers firing away, and we do see a couple of archons already taking some damage. Revelation drops, and those lurkers are going to be uh, revealed pretty quick. And this Hydra's lurker is going to come around this side. A storm comes down, and a lot of things actually picked off. Mothership gets uh, abducted in. That's a little bit of something. A counter-attack of Zerglin is now going to try and kill the Natural Nexus. I'm not sure how much that even matters, though. What's the Natural Nexus in a game where there's no mining even on the Natural Expansion? He still needs to do more. Killing pylons over here would be amazing, right? Because then at least he would shut down further reinforcements, supply blocks, etc. Because right now, again, for Bly, it's all about just surviving this attack at the moment, which has already picked off his forward fourth base. Maybe now loops around towards the fifth, or even just puts himself between the fifth and the third. And from there... It becomes very difficult to actually, you know, stop his Bly, who has to pull his entire army down to deal with this as well. Storm will come down. Twelve more probes died. I mean, the economy of Creator really isn't much at all right now, and Bly's economy being ahead for so long is really starting to show through that even though he lost a lot of army here, he's starting to get back to the army supplies being even because Creator didn't press this issue immediately. He did take a little while. Now that he has finally pressed, he already got a base. The Bly's still on five bases. This base to the right side. A very powerful base as well for him at the moment. Another storm drops and we are going to be seeing pushing forwards. Another Archon goes down. Another storm. And a lot more Hydras taking quite a beating. Well, at the same time, Creator moves forwards over here to try and get rid of these Lurkers. He's going to get rid of a fair amount of them, but it doesn't come for free. It costs him quite a lot of units. And even then, he doesn't even get rid of all of the Lurkers in the very end. Hydras chasing forwards will get these last couple of Archons. Creator's still on the bottom left-hand side, though, and I guess the big thing is that even now that he's cleaned out the Lurk account, if it's only Hydras, it's easy for him to take further engagements from this point onwards. I'm 
So that's going to continue to come up on the top side. And we are going to be having the uh, couple of Archons. Actually, cleaning up some creep, which takes away a lot of the map control of Bly. Bly not going to be able to move around as easily as he has been doing up until now. As he comes over to the right-hand side, he is still ahead in supply. Armies are even. And again, a few Archons, a couple of Zards going to get the chance to maybe run down and... Uh, We'll see what's going to happen. Some lurkers up the left as well. Another war prism down the right, and well, so just seeing what's next. Plus two shield weapons coming up. Oh no, so shield weapons, shield armor. Uh, plus two shield is just what it's called. God damn it! So it's one of those days where I really do uh, question myself in terms of what I say sometimes. Um, I mean, plus two shields coming through helps the archons massively more so than uh, armor upgrades actually do. As we're going to be seeing those archons taking a lot of hits here. Those hydras are deadly if they can get the shots off. Remember, Kratos is still playing with a really limited economy. And these bases are starting to really mine out as well. He's actually going to warp in a uh, Dark Shrine. If you get get some Dark Temple into play, he could really get something going. You know, because Bly is really strung out across his bases. And there isn't Spore Crawlers up all over the place. There's definitely openings which could be punished with DTs. There's a couple of Lurkers in the main not being a nuisance, but... Feels though it's not going to be too long until a couple of units just show up to kind of deal with that. Oh, that's bad for Bly. He just transferred his drones down this ramp in towards a death zone. The rocks get taken down, so Bly can't push down this. This hatchery is going to start falling. 16 drones have gone down already. And we are going to be seeing the uh, hatchery dropping to the right. I mean, and these drones pull away. Suddenly, Bly is not really mining either. The income swings into creator's favor. While army supplies are still the same, I imagine Crater must have a recall, right? Because he hasn't used a recall in a long time. So I imagine he has one. Bly goes straight up the middle of the map. Crater here turns around, kills a couple of overseers in the center. Is he just going to base trade this? Or maybe go for a base and then recall because he knows that he has a recall? That might be the way he plays this out because in that way he's going to deny another base of economy for his opponent and then get home while maybe only losing the base of his own. It's hard to say exactly. We actually see these immortals over here gonna get taken down so quickly. The storms were really good though. I mean those hydras are low. But it looks as though Korea is pretty committed to this continued base trade at the moment. He does have warping potential. He actually has got the money to kind of add a few extra units into play. Yes, the question is what do you actually really add into play? It's a hard decision to make at this sort of stage. This base is gonna go down. Now it's this base or die trying, I think, and so I think you have to if you're gonna recall, you have to recall around about now. Maybe he just wants to try and get this base first. He's going to try and go for a couple of DTs are warping in. Not even... Oh, they do defensive DTs? Well, that wouldn't work, though. There's an Overseer. A High Templar, though. Feedback the Overseer, then use the DTs defensively. Oh, my God. That would be amazing. That would actually be insane. That would be so sick. Obviously, you don't know where the next uh, nearest Overseer is. Creator gives up this base, so he's in full-on base trade mode. He only really has the main base left over. He's kind of out of money too as he warps in two more Zelds. His Dark Shrine is about to go down. Those DTs, where did they get to? I'm actually not quite sure where they got to. Looks like they're going to gather up the rest of their army. There's actually quite a few of them. I mean, Blood doesn't have a lot of money either. He's got triple Overseer on the map. They are spread out though. He's starting to uh, bring his Overseers together, probably realizing he needs them, or as many of them as possible. Four High Templar, they have Storm Energy. And Bly did start to drop some changes to get the energy low on the Overseer. That means you can't feed back it to take it down instantly. The few Phoenix in the skies, I mean, there's only two, so it's not like it's a given that you're going to be able to get rid of the Overseer. There's the Observers as well. Two Observers, so Lurkers aren't a kind of a win condition just yet either. Bly only has two bases of his own, remember, guys. This base trade has been ongoing, and players have been chipping away each other for some time. Bly's long distance mining the last couple of bases that are around here. Bly is going to commit to the base trade. A couple of drones on the map that can become extractors, but not much more. I mean, this uh, lurker is not going to stand much of a chance. A spore crawler killed off. Bly doesn't even have that much money. 186, so it really would just be extractors if he's going to build anything. I guess Creator can recall to the main. I guess that's the power play, right? The ability to recall to the main is just so good. Obviously, Bly saw this recall happening. We want to use the Oracle now to start taking down the Great Aspire, so that will be targeted here as we see the Hydras pushing in. And he's going to get both of these extra uh, Extractors, or Assimilators. One High Temple leading the charge. And Bly just can't push up the ramp, right? And that's maybe one of the bigger issues. A few Hydras over here. What do you commit across the map? Uh, 
Man, an army supply is so heavily in creator's favor, and as he comes down this ramp, you'll pick off the changeling. Blyce on to head back home through the center. It is risky, though, for creator to move across, because if something hits this base while he's heavily out of position, it comes down to a countdown, you know, who kills what first. And Bly has drones to build extractors with, and that is a huge deal. Bly, you know, drones building extractors are able to really just kind of draw out the game a little bit longer, make that Protoss player run around. Hazard sits uh, to the right hand side, and we are just going to be seeing Archons and Mortals, High Templar, moving through the center. An Oracle leading the charge. I guess you should take the production tab off, put the unit tab on. One Lurk and 26 Hydras is the fighting army of Bly. Five Archons, six Immortals, four High Templar full of energy, so eight Storms. The one DT is still in play, and there's ten Zalots as well, I mean. It's just so much. It's just so much here for Creator. I think Bly really might be in a little bit of trouble. 25 minutes in to this game. Number two. Creators want to open the series. He might be about to qualify for our Wadi TV Weekly Season 4 Finals. The one lurker here is not going to last long at all. It's going to get taken down. So the one lurker is dead. I guess Creator was kind of waiting until recall was off cooldown, which it is in about five seconds. So he's going to be able to recall again very soon. This time he'll kill the Hive, and then he'll see the final structures remaining for his opponent. So he goes straight in, straight towards the Hive. Probably leaves a few Zealots or something here to clean up the rest of the structures as well, right? I just continue to move on forwards again. They just have to go for this here soon. He leaves the DT here. Two overseers. I mean, it can be cleaned up. There's the root call. Bly's going to come into the main. He realizes he just has to try and pick a fight at some point now, but it's just not going to be good. Although, I mean, that's the best fight he's going to find. So many units of creators stuck in the back. As you see, the storm's alone, and literally half of creators' army was able to take this fight here. As uh, Bly pushing forwards, Creator killing his own building. In a base trade like this, that's not what you usually see. As Bly has to back away, and this DT is just swipe, swipe, swiping away. 14 army supply remains for Bly. That's these seven Hydras. That's all that remains now. Coming through the centers, we do see GG being called. Creator knows, or Bly knows that this is over. Creator probably knew that this was over too in his favor.